Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to talk to you about ankle and foot rehabilitation after a stroke or a neurological injury. It's going to be a long video. I'm going to be talking about foot drop, weakness in the ankles, and the use of exercises to overcome this, as well as the AFOs that you can use to overcome this. Next, I'm going to talk to you about tightness and spasticity that can happen in the ankle, and what exercises you can use, and what, some, what are some tools that you can use for this. After that, I'm going to talk to you about this important sensation and proprioceptive issues that you will have, which can affect your balance after a stroke, especially in your ankle and your foot. And I'm going to give you some strategies to overcome that. And I'm also going to give you some functional exercise as a bonus. Along the way, I will be sharing with you some products that are useful for rehabilitation. So do check them out if you are keen. Welcome to Basically Physio. My name is Suresh and I'm a physiotherapist. And a quick disclaimer is that none of this replaces medical professional advice. And I do this in my personal capacity. I do not represent anyone. So what is a foot drop? Foot drop is basically a situation where you are not able to lift up your ankle. That means you're not able to dorsiflex your ankle this way. This happens quite commonly after a stroke because you are not your tibialis anterior muscle, which is the muscle that is mainly involved in bending your ankle upwards. This will be affected after a stroke. So that is the reason why you're not having this ability to dorsiflex, meaning uh, bring your ankle upwards in a manner like this. So how do you ensure that you can actually continue living your life even though your ankle is weak. So this is where I'm going to share with you some exercises that you can start off even when you have no power at all, all the way as you wake up until you have some power and then continuing the exercises will be the best for you to do. Okay, so I want you to get your ankle in a position like this, putting your weaker ankle and your weaker leg over on your stronger leg like this. Okay, so in this position, what I want you to do is actually focus on doing some passive range of motion for your ankle. So grabbing your ankle by the forefoot here or even by the heel here, whichever is comfortable for you. I just want you to go upwards, downwards, inwards and outwards. Okay, four different movements, upwards, downwards, inwards and outwards. I want you to do this very slowly and very gently because you are just trying to loosen up your ankle joint by doing all this passive range of motion just to make sure that your range is actually intact, still there. So this is for your foot drop exercises, okay? You're just going to activate going down and up, in and out. For each direction, I'm going to aim for about 30 repetitions per direction and you want to do it for one to two sets before you progress to the other exercises. So now in your foot drop journey, if you find that you have a little bit more strength or if you find that you have uh, ability to activate your muscles, what you can do is combine this passive range of motion, meaning the four directions. But along the movements, I want you to also focus on using your ankle muscles to do some of these movements. I do not expect you to move your ankle like this, but even if you have some flickers of movement, do coordinate with your hand as you're going upwards, even if it's some flickers of movements, close your eyes and imagine your ankle going upwards like this together with your hand. So the movement is largely coming with your hand, but you are actually also activating a little bit of your muscles in your ankle and your foot joint to actually increase the range of motion by doing it a little bit more actively. And so the other important component by going up and down like this is actually the mental imagery. That is whereby you're visualizing this movement by closing your eyes, as well as trying your best to activate in all four directions. If you find this video useful, do consider liking and subscribing to the channel and also signing up for my weekly newsletter, Rehab Recovery. This exercise of stretching, we're going to need a towel like this, a long towel and going into a loop like this. Okay, using your stronger hand and your weaker hand slightly, just want to grab your, your towel and go to the front of your foot like this. Okay, using your stronger hand now, I want you to just pull your towel backwards like this, meaning going this direction, okay, towards your body. As you're pulling, you want to hold it there as long as you can and just let go gently. As you let go, try not to make your ankle fall down like this, okay. So when you're holding it upwards like this, as you're holding it, try to actually activate your muscles in your ankle and your feet to actually hold your ankle in the position that you're pulling it at. So as you, are, as you are trying to hold it there, try to let go of this towel gently and for as long as possible, just try to maintain your ankle angle in a bent up position, okay? So you want to do it a few times. It's going to be a little bit tiring and tricky at the start actually, but just pull your towel back like this and this is the position of the ankle that you want to maintain by using your active muscles. So at the moment that you feel you're ready to hold on to it using your active muscles, just let go of the towel a little bit and keep your ankle bent up in a manner like that. 
I'm going to try this for a good 10 repetitions and repeat it for 3 sets, but this will be a bit tiring. So the next exercise is actually just actively dorsiflexing your ankle, so going up like this. So you may not be able to bend up all the way like this, but that is fine. If you're just able to get some movement whereby your toes are lifting up the ground, that is already a very good start. So you just want to keep on doing this, okay? Really focus on looking at your leg and your feet and trying to bend your ankle upwards like this. And as, you're, as you keep on doing it, you'll be able to increase the range of motion. So this is the dorsiflexion that is actually going to be missing when you're having foot drop in the early stages, but eventually it may come back up. So just focus on doing it gently. Do it for 10 repetitions and 3 sets. So a very useful exercise that you can do is actually a modified lunge and this is going to indirectly activate your ankle muscles here, okay, your tibialis anterior muscles in a much more uh, lengthening po portion which is the eccentric contraction. So first I want you to hold on to a surface structure for support and putting your weaker leg forward like this. What I want you to do is just bend it down like this as slowly as you can and straightening out. Okay, the, you want to go down as slowly as you can and this is the main movement that you're working on. This is actually going to eccentrically lengthen your dorsiflexion and this is the one that is going to indirectly fire up your ankle muscles and the muscles that is firing up is actually the muscles that are going to help to bend your ankle upwards. Okay, so this is a modified lunge like this. Just lean forward and go down as slowly as you can and then push your ankle up. Okay, lean forward, of course holding on to support and you want to go down as slowly as you can, doing it for a total of 10 repetitions. And you want to do it for a total of 3 sets. Okay, lean forward and really push your ankle up this way. AFOs or ankle foot orthosis are very important and useful tools that you can use in your journey to have a recovery from foot drop. What these do is that they keep your ankle in a more neutral position so that when you're walking, your ankle is not touching the ground, or your, your toes are not touching the ground and you're not tripping and falling over. So in terms of safety, this can actually help you a lot in your early days to prevent any injury from happening to yourself and to your ankle joint. However, the thing about AFOs is that you cannot get too reliant on it. Meaning, the moment you have some ankle movements coming back, you should have a practice of gradually weaning off your ankle foot orthosis. The reason is because if you are continuing using ankle foot orthosis, especially for every single thing that you do in your life, then it is going to be very hard for you to wean it off even when you have the strength that's coming back in your ankle. And when you have the strength that's coming back in the ankle, if you do not use the strength properly, then it is actually just you're going to waste. You're not actually recovering your ankle joint even though you have the ability to. So the thing to take about take a note about AFOs is that in the early stages it is going to be very useful for you to prevent injury and also uh, help you to walk further in a more efficient manner. But the moment you start to notice you have some power coming back in your ankle, you have to incorporate exercises to actually wean off this AFO. That means you have to do your activities with and without the AFO. And for this, I highly recommend you to seek advice from a doctor or therapist because they will be the ones who are much more suitable to identify when it is ready for you to wean off your AFO. So if you find that you are able to wean off your AFO, do seek some advice from these people before doing it by yourself. The next thing we're going to talk about is tightness and spasticity that can happen in your ankle. So why is your ankle very prone to becoming tight and having a lot of tone in your ankle? This is because your ankle Gravity acts on your ankle very easily because your ankle is like the last joint in your body and it is exposed to the free surrounding environment. So meaning when your ankle is just at rest, what is going to happen is that it is naturally going to go down just because of the weight of the ankle and the foot, gravity is just going to pull it downwards like this. And when it goes down like this, it also tends to turn inwards like this a little bit. So the reason why it's very easy for your ankle to get tight in a manner that is going to be downwards and inwards, it is because gravity just pulls it due to the weight into such a position. And this is the reason why it's always going to be much more easier for your ankles to get tighter if you're not actively using it or stretching it in the early days. So what happens if you do not treat this tightness? What will happen is that you're going to develop a very compensatory approach to walking and your other activities in your daily living. This is because you, are not, you will not be able to clear your foot, meaning when you are swinging your leg forward as you go take step one by one, what is going to happen is that your foot and your toes are going to be scrapping the ground and this is naturally going to cause you to trip and fall down. So this is very important for you to start to address in the early stages, especially when you start noticing it. This is when you should start activating it by making it more stronger 
and also stretching it out by making it a little bit more looser. So I'm going to share a few exercises in this segment here to do when you suspect that you are having some tightness or some tone in your ankle. Okay, so for tightness exercises, coming into this position like this again for your ankle, what you want to focus on is actually going upwards and going outwards. Okay, outwards means going down to the ground. Upwards means going towards your knee for your weaker leg. So this is my weaker leg. What I'm going to do is using my stronger hand, I'm just going to push my ankle as high as you can. Okay, so just going up as much as you can. You may not be able to achieve this angle at the start first, but it is okay. Just push to however much you can. Hold it for about 30 seconds to a minute and repeat it for three sets. Okay, so going up is one direction. Next is you want to go downwards like this. So by going downwards, you actually want to grab the behind portion of your foot near your heel and actually just grabbing the mid portion and the back portion, just rolling it outwards like this. You want to go your ankle downwards like this and holding it for about 30 seconds to a minute and repeating it for three sets. Okay, so using your towel, you want to do a dorsiflexion stretch by just hooking your towel at the front of the foot and just pulling it up this way. So you want to really feel the stretch at the back of your calf here, all the muscles here. You want to hold it for about 30 seconds and repeat it for up to about 3 to 5 sets. You can hold it between 30 seconds to a minute and repeat it to 3 to 5 sets. So another useful stretch that you can do is actually a wedge stretch. And I'm actually going to show you how you can do with a chopping board and a thick textbook. Okay, so we're just going to put a thick textbook like this, okay. And then your chopping board, you're just going to angle it this way. And this actually gives you a kind of a wedge where you can actually stretch your ankle out in an angle. So putting your ankle on this angle, angle chopping board, you just want to lean into it to stretch it out a little bit more. Okay, so I'm also going to link a product in the description below. This is actually a foam wedge. It's going to be much more effective and going to be useful for you to stretch it out if you have the money and resources to purchase it. If not, then you just use a chopping board and a textbook like this to actually get your stretch out like this. Okay, so you want to lean forward and really stretch the back of your calves. And this is going to be a very useful stretch and it's going to be a bit more easier for you to maintain this stretch. So you want to hold it for about 30 seconds to a minute and repeat it for 3 to 5 sets. Okay, the next set of stretching that I'm going to teach you is going to be a little bit more different and I've not shown you this exercise before, so listen carefully. So there's going to be two components to this. One is the stretching component and one is the active, actively activating your muscles portion of this. So the first portion, we're just going to hook your ankle up like this and you're going to pull for six seconds, okay? You're going to pull for six seconds, okay? As you're pulling for six seconds, I would then want you to let go of it, and in this manner, just try to actively activate your ankle going up as much as you can, okay? The main aim of this exercise is not to really get a full range of motion, but just firing up these muscles, your, your dorsiflexion muscles, holding it for six seconds, and immediately after you relax, just go back into your stretching. Okay, so it is a it is an activation and stretching drill. Hold it for six seconds now the stretch. Okay, then after that let go and now try to activate your ankle going up as fast as you can and as quickly as you can. But don't need to go up all the way like I mentioned. Okay, as much as you can. Six seconds over, go into your stretching. Okay, so completely relax your ankle now and go into your stretching. So this technique is actually going to activate your muscles and then relax the muscles and that's when you're going to do the stretching and hopefully this can get a little bit more range for you. Okay, so I'm going to recap again. First, you just want to stretch for 6 seconds without activating your muscles. After 6 seconds is over, let go of the stretch and focus on activating the muscle. Going your ankle upwards like this for 6 seconds. Once that is over, completely relax and go into a stretch and just pull for another 6 seconds. Okay, so this is the process. You're going to activate 6 seconds, stretch for 6 seconds, and then activate 6 seconds and stretch for 6 seconds. Total, I want you to do for 6 sets, and you can do up to 10 sets if you find that this is beneficial for you. If you want to know more about ankle spasticity, I actually did a video on it in a few weeks back. So do check out this. The link is in the description below. So sensation and proprioception are quite common issues that you will face after a stroke or neurological injury. What is sensation? Sensation is actually your ability to feel touch, pressure and vibration. So for example, when you're sitting down, if your brain is healthy and your body is healthy, you'll be able to feel your feet in touch with the ground and also maybe if you're wearing a socks or a shoe, you'll be able to feel the surroundings of it. But what happens after a stroke is that you will not be able to feel these sensations as, 
as accurately or as strongly as before. So that means that whenever you are standing or sitting, you may not be very sure of what your feet is touching and this actually would be able will be affecting your balance and your ability to stand up straight and also when you're walking. So all this will actually put you at a high risk of fall. Next one is proprioception. Proprioception is actually a word that is describing the joint position, where your joint position is. That means when you're closing your eyes and when you raise up your hand like this, without even realizing or noticing much, you'll be able to know that your hand is at this position, even when your eyes are closed. Same goes for your ankle and your feet. So this is the ability to actually detect where your body is with relative to the space around you and the environment around you. After a stroke, this also can be affected and imagine that you actually may not know accurately where exactly your feet or your ankle is and this will also tend to affect your balance. So sensation and proprioceptive issues will tend to affect your balance and your ability to walk and your ability to keep yourself upright and not fall down. So some strategies that you can do is when, for sensation, you can actually start walking or using your hand to touch your feet with different textures. So some of these textures can be rough, can be smooth, can be silky. These are just giving you experiences for your, and for your nerve fibers in the ends of your feet to actually detect all these type of different changes. And also as you're looking at it and doing it, the different textures, you may actually have a different type of feedback that's going to your brain and this may hopefully and this may hopefully tend to improve your sensation over time. It is not guaranteed but it's worth a shot. Another thing that you can do, a demonstration I'm going to show is that you can do some gentle brushing over the bottom of your feet and this also tends to uh, help you in terms of feeling this sensation. It is not going to be a guarantee that you're going to get better sensation but it may help the situation. So give it a shot if you would like to. So for your sensation and proprioception exercises, what you want to do is actually get a hairbrush like this and just going up and down, okay, just going up and down in different directions, but just make sure you're not doing it in a very forceful manner, okay, be gentle and go through all these different directions while looking at your brushing and also trying to feel these sensations as you are doing this. So coming to functional exercises, do give this a shot if you have the time and energy left to continue exercising. Okay, another functional exercise that you can do is just simply heel, lifting your heel up like this and down. Holding onto support on the stronger side, just going up and down for 10 repetitions and you want to do it for 3 sets. Another functional exercise that you can do for balance is actually keeping your weaker leg forward like this and your stronger leg backwards like this and without holding on to any support, just maintaining this stance position. And this is going to activate your all these intrinsic muscles in your foot and also in your ankle muscles to keep you in a much more balanced position. But take note for this exercise, since it's going to challenge your balance, you want to hold on to support only if you find that you're very wobbly. And also, I highly, highly recommend you to do this with a family member or a caregiver standing by your side at the start because the first time you're going to do this is going to challenge your balance quite a bit. Okay, so when you're before you do this exercise, please make sure you have someone to stand beside you just to make sure that you're safe. And after you've done a few repetitions of it and you find that you're able to do it, then go and do it, but stand beside a support structure and hold on if you need to. Thank you for watching till the end. Do watch this video for ankle spasticity exercises on the left. And on the right, you can actually take a look at the full body exercises that you can do after a stroke or a neurological injury. Thank you and I'll see you in the next video.